Hey guys, Crazy Aaron here. Welcome to another fun episode of The Crazy Aaron Show, where we take a look at the fascinating parts of our vast and incredible world that have inspired all my thinking putty creations. Let's get started. what you'll need to play along. Do you have an illusion thinking putty? Well, if you do, get it out because a little later on, we're gonna definitely wanna be playing with our scarab or oil slick or lava thinking putty. So last time we zoomed in on the coral reef to learn even more about a class of animals called Nadarians. I thought it was pretty fascinating. What did you think? If you liked it, I'd love to see some more in the comments. If you have questions and you wanna get even more into those sea creatures, I would love to take you there. So let me know. Well, we also learned how we could get our own special creatures, the Hydra, just going out into nature, grabbing some pond water from wherever you are, putting it in the sun, using the power of the sun to help those creatures grow big enough that you could even see them with your own eyes. So what is iridescence? Iridescence is a color that appears on a surface but actually changes a little bit depending on the angle of light and also can be changed depending on what color is underneath it. So an iridescent color definitely is a color but it's also generally very transparent. You can see through it to what's behind. It's almost like a filter of light. Think about soap bubbles or feathers, um, butterfly wings for sure, some seashells like mother of pearl and certain minerals. All of them have something in common, which is that their color comes from their structure. If you were to take a bird feather that's just a bright iridescent blue and you were to grind it up into a powder, that blue color would disappear. If you took a seashell that had beautiful mother of pearl iridescent color on it and ground it up, that color would disappear. It's the thickness of different layers of oxide that actually create the color by interfering with some light waves of one color. And longer waves or shorter waves of different colors are able to pass on through and be reflected back to your eyes. Think about a peacock or a blue morpho butterfly, the scarab beetle. I've got one of those to show you, a June bug. They're all very similar. The scarab beetle, he has passed on and uh, given that he is an insect and his shell is made of chitin, he can be retained dry for a very, very long time. You can see almost his whole body is colored. And that's interesting because nature has actually solved the same problem again and again. How to get incredible, long-lasting color through structure rather than chemical formulation. So a chemical color, like the color of beets, a red color, a purpley red, very beautiful. What's wrong with it? Well, it doesn't hold up in sunlight. And so that animal would need to expend energy making more and more of it and a way to take out the bad stuff and put in the new stuff again and again. But color by structure is permanent. So for something like a feather that grows out and can't be replaced, there's no sort of way of moving the juices in and out of a feather. It's like your hair. It just grows. This is a great solution that nature has come up with. So today's activity, we're going to actually make a scarab beetle. It's okay if you don't actually have super scarab thinking putty, grab whatever, but especially if you have one of the illusions, we can make something iridescent and magical looking. So what I want you to do is take your thinking putty, split it in half, then take those halves and split them in half again. See, you got it, we're doing math. We went from one to a half to a quarter. With those four halves, you're gonna take the largest and split it into thirds. One third is going to be the head. Two thirds is going to be the abdomen. I want you to put them together and now that you've built the body, you can make the legs, 
and now you can make the cool little mouth parts. Insects have lots of complicated mouths. Make those mouth parts. Very cool. Send me in your picture. I would love to see your scarab. Let's see if it's better than what we were able to come up with here at Crazy Aaron's. I want to show you another neat trick that can be done with thin film interference using some of the materials that we have at Crazy Aaron's. I'm going to do what's called a drawdown. That is, I'm going to take a pigment and I'm going to drag it across a surface to see what it looks like, not in a pile, but in a thin layer, to give me an idea of what it might look like in real life if we were to use it. Okay, here we have three interference pigments and you can see they all look like white powder, almost exactly the same. If I dip my finger in here and I take it and I drag it across the white, you're not seeing very much. But against black, there's a color. I'll use another finger. Again, across white, not so much. And then look at that. That sure is interesting. And now we'll do the last one. Take it and drag across white, not so much. But look at that, three different colors. And on my fingers, you can sort of see it. So against white, you really don't get anything. But as you add a background color for the light to travel through, you start to see the magic. So why are all of these beetles and birds shiny? Don't you think they would want to camouflage themselves? Well, sometimes animals make themselves shiny because they are sending a danger signal. Like, yeah, I know you can see me, but you don't want to eat me because there's something you don't know. So if you saw an insect with bright yellow and black bands alternating, you would say, red alert, he's probably going to sting me. Or if I was a caterpillar that's super bright green that stands out against those dark green leaves, I might say, oh, he probably tastes terrible. He might even make me sick. It might be poison. But there's another reason. It's called flash camouflage. Sometimes by being bright and ostentatious, you can actually hide better. So think about a forest. You have bright sunlight coming through the leaves and you have alternating areas of brightness and darkness. The extremes are strong. There's a lot of contrast there. Well, being a shiny beetle that reflects different colors, you can actually blend in to the forest more than you might imagine. And when you're flying, you can make it harder for a predator to figure out which way you're zigging and zagging. Now let's take a look at some soap bubbles. We can even create those interference layers using metal and a blowtorch. We can do it right before our very eyes. That it actually starts to react. You can see it's turning a color there, a little bit reddish. What if we add a little more heat in that area? Look at that. Now it is starting to glow red hot but I'm going to go a little more and then we're going to let it cool off so it will stop glowing. And we'll see. Look at that. And what you get is interference color. Look at that. Now the metal has been blued, so to speak. It's been given an oxide layer and you can see where the temperature was lower and the layer is thinner. It's a little more reddish. And where it's thickest, it's blue with maybe a turquoise tint. And if you like what you see, of course, you can go to our website, puttyworld.com, pick up some illusions thinking putty, maybe support your local specialty toy store. Call them up and tell them you want some crazy errands, illusion thinking putty. I'm sure they can hook you up with curbside service or by connecting you with one of our special web bundles. And if you like what you see, well, why not tell a friend about The Crazy Aaron Show? Share us on Instagram, Facebook. We'll be on YouTube soon. There's so many different ways to watch. Check out our video archive. We have tons and tons of fun and exciting science activities, wonder, and discovery. Well, it's time to read a letter. I've got one right here. Let's see what this one says. This is from James, and he lives in Chatsworth, California. Oh, I don't know where Chatsworth is. I'm going to guess it's somewhere in Northern California. Let's see. Dear Crazy Aaron, I have some ideas to give you, like mashups. 
and when then there's a surprise when you mix the final components together. Ooh, James, I like that. I want to do that. The putties have to be new and have a certain effect. Um, I have different ideas for magnetics. Why don't you make an orange magnetic? James, I'll tell you a secret. I actually have one on my desk. Just made it the other day. Maybe it'll get out into the world. Shh. Uh, gamma ray bursts. Oh, I would like to make a putty based on a gamma ray burst. Uh, and think about making a big version of Superstar. You just can't get enough, can you? The color shocks also in a big version. If you get this letter, um, please send me a gift, not something I already have. Well, James, I don't know everything that you have, but I will take a guess and see what I can send you. Oh, you did say on your Instagram, I can see them. So I will check that out, James. Thank you so much for being a super fan. Thanks for writing. If you'd like to get a letter back in the mail from Crazy Aaron, old school style, from the post office, 700 East Main Street, Norristown, PA, 19401. And I would be pleased to personally respond to you. It's a great project when you're sitting at home, you're supposed to be doing e-learning, practice that handwriting, learn how the mail works. I would love to hear from you. Well guys, that's about all for now. So long, see you next time.